Uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome to another annual seminar. Today, it's my pleasure to introduce Sean Chu He, who, who has been here with us as an intern this summer. Sean Shu is an undergraduate at UCLA and a member of UCLA NLP lab. Prior to the internship, her research interests focused on pre-trained vision and language models such as Visual Bird and Clipbird and their application to various structural learning tasks. During this internship, uh, Sean Shu has been researching event-centric knowledge representation and specifically event sequences generation. Uh, please join me in welcoming Shan Chu and enjoying her talk. Thanks. Thank you. So today I'm going to present my internship project for this summer. So the title is called Constraint Event Sequence Generation as well as Text Generation. So it consists of two parts. First, we're going to look at some motivations and goals we want to achieve with this project. So. If we look at events, it is pretty important to natural languages. Um, for instance, if we have some goal, like we want to choose a second dog for company, and we, we could have a list of things or events that we have to do in order to accomplish this goal. For instance, we may have to choose a breed that is suitable um, to our current dog, and we may have to um, choose its um, temperament, its age, and as well as size. So these are all like events that are important to accomplish this kind of goal. And we're going to introduce a concept called event process. So what is event process? So event process is a partially ordered events that are usually about the same protagonist. Um, for example, for the, um, for the choosing a second dog, uh, we have this list of chains that together accomplish this goal for us. So in this case, um, this uh, sequence or chain may not be fully temporally ordered, but for some other cases, we can tell like it could be um, temporally ordered. For, um, for instance, if we are considering gaining a PhD, there are like several steps for that too. Um, for instance, you have to finish your course requirement and you have to pick a thesis and you have to prepare for the um, prepare for the defense and also like complete your defense. So these are like event process that can help us to achieve this kind of goal. So from the example, we can see like to achieve this kind of goal, the process usually comprises of multiple um, events. And more broadly, we can tell that natural language understanding needs this level of understanding. To be more specific, if we look at an instance of narrative prediction, so um, so one day Wesley's auntie come over and visit, and we can see there's interaction between different character, and we have to reason like what the character eventually will react. So if the not model is aware of like the information about the sequence of events, like if it's able to uh, reason what's more likely to happen after one event, then this kind of task become um, become more easy. Cause like um, if if the like Denise is not behaving very well, that he is unlikely to be rewarded, but will be scolded. So like we can understand that events are very important to allow you. Moreover, like this kind of event process evaluation is available to us right now. So here is a previous work that basically uh, also do uh, events generation. So if we can take in a, pre uh, a event process, which is comprised of a predicate and the argument such as buy a house, by um, leveraging other observed processes such as buy a car or rent a house, or repair a house, we can uh, infer about what's the most likely sequence to accomplish this task. So since we have this like data set or task, uh, we want to see like if uh, we can also use like current language models to accomplish this same level of event process generation. So we can, in that case, we can not only like leveraging um, the observed events, but we can also use the prior that is already in those pre-trained LM models to help us better inform, infer the knowledge. So the last motivation is 
um, say if we already been successful in generating such sequences, uh, what can we use it for? So one thing like in the previous paper that we see is called like a plan and write style. So basically you could plan those um, script line structures beforehand before you generate the entire story. And basically these scripts or events can help you generate better stories or more co coherent one. So, so we want to see like if we can obtain, after we obtain these sequences, can we apply it to um, like generate the stories and could it be better than if we don't have information to such sequences? So this is the last motivation. So in summary, we have two goal for this project. So the focus of this summer will be like generating one process using pre-trained LMs, um, mostly for like autoregressive models such as GPT-2 or BART. And we want to use it um, in a way such that like it is goal oriented so we can constrain the output such that it can um, just like focusing on finishing this task. And we also want to see if we can use this event process to help with language generation. So a simple thing to do is just um, take a model that only use title and let it generate on its own and take a model that use like ground truth event sequences and let it generate a story as well and compare the result. And we can also plug in the like event sequences that we generated into the model to see if it can also helps. So if this is um, possible to do, then we can imagine using our model, we can apply it to different corpus and have it generate different kind of event sequences. And it could possibly help us to generate better tasks in various tasks. So <clears throat> these are two project goals. So um, let's come to the problem definition as well as the data set. So, we will first see the event sequence generation definition. So our input will first be a um, process key, which comprises of a tuple, that is a predicate or an argument. Um, we can say like buy a house. And we also have like access to relevant processes and their event chains. So relevant process is defined as processes that share the same predicate or argument. So we can have these two set of relevant um, processes and as well as their observed like subsequences, such as um, if we have buy a house, we can also have rent a house and we can have a list of its subsequence. Like maybe you um, go to check out different areas you're interested in, and you con contact the um, agent and you decide on uh, your like optimal price and also location you want. And this kind of similar structure will help us to guide towards this process key. And for this task, the process key will be unobserved in the training data. It will be completely new. And lastly, we also have the length of the process chain. So like how many steps we want to predict for this process. And the output would simply be the event chain for this process. One thing to note here is that um, the event chain produced in the origin work is actually a verb-centric graph. So uh, we basically linearize it to use it as input to our model. So in the evaluation time, the output will also be a linearized, like just a sentence-like structure. And we also have the definition for the text generation. So we also have the process key. And we also, we, this time we have the predicate event sequence as the input. So for input, there can be many ways to apply this. For instance, one way, one simple way would just be generate the entire event sequence at one time and use uh, and basically concatenate the event process and the event sequence together as the input. And we will expect the model to output the original text. Um, but there is also other ways to do it. For instance, because we have different steps in these processes, we can have the model to basically take one 
sub-event and generate the sentence um, related to it and give it another sub-event and generate another text. So there are two ways. One is just generate all the way, and there, the other one is using intermediate you result and generate it step by step. So, so <clears throat> the current baseline will just use like a process key plus whatever is predicted by our uh, first model and versus the process key only. So this is the original data set of this um, work. So um, it is WikiHow. So in this work, we have like three parts. First is the title. So the title would be like how to help save river in this case. And we also have like a summary, which is the both phase sentence here, like take quicker shower or wait for a full load of closing. So, and we also have the text that describing it. So like uh, whatever follows the take quick shower to save water and like um, what comes after it is the paragraph like detailing this um, summary. So for current, um, for current usage, we are uh, we are like using only the summary as our text. So that is to say, uh, when we are doing extraction, we extract events using the summary, and we want to like uh, retrieve the summary in our text generation part. So this is our actual data set, which is which is based on like WikiHow. So um, so as we can see in this picture, uh, we have like improved process, like by a house. And after like inferencing it, we, we have like a series of output, like search house and contact dealer. So um, after filtering um, this data set provide us with over 10,000 training process and about 30,000 um, about um, so we will basically take a pre-trained model and just use their training and test to see our performance. So here comes the method part. So at first, I'm introducing this project. I mentioned it's a constrained um, sequence generation. So the constraint here means it is goal-oriented. So we have this constraint that we have to uh, accomplish, like we have to finish the test of by a house, but not others. So we will have to force our model to like benefit from this um, existing processes. So we basically did a constraint sequence generation part because like um, otherwise the like the model will not be able to benefit from the input we already have, like the baseline. So if we can constrain it in a way such that the model can um, benefit from like employing the same structure, maybe even the same like steps to do in other similar processes, uh, we we assume like the model will do a better job, um, then we do not constrain it at all. And second reason is just for fair comparison with previous work. So the, in the previous work, the vocabulary is basically defined by um, relevant processes. So I will explain this more in detail in the next few slides. So our vocabulary um, can be constructed uh, in these steps. So say we have an observed process that comprises of several steps. And for each of these relevant process, we look at each of its subsequence. And each subsequence has like M words. And we will go ahead and retrieve all the hypername from WordNet. And it may have an, um, like hypernames in total. And we will view it as a possible candidate for like this position of the word. So something we are doing a little differently than the original work is that our constraint is not totally fixed. So um, in the original work, when we are predicting uh, sequences, um, after you generate one word, the rest of the word will also be affected too. So like, um, because you observe this one um, relevant subsequences and you basically add all of its permutation of hypernames into the candidate states. So like the lens is fixed and 
for instance, if you predict one word, you basically know uh, what's the probability, what's the likelihood of the possible um, next sequences. But we like relax it a little bit. We just like um, constrain the vocabulary that we want to um, project on. So there are two sets of vocabulary we're currently doing. The first one is um, we first, um, there's a vocabulary for root. So the verb centric, it's mostly verb sometimes now. And all the others are shared. So basically, after we retrieve this, all this hypernym, we put it into a list and we can basically generate from this list for like whatever comes after the root. And there is also the process any, which like each position is fixed. So, um, cause like the length of the subsequences can be fixed. We basically um, put a uh, like constraint on which is the likely um, vocabulary for each of the um, like, steps yeah so you have shown two uh figures in one, one of them was a graph other one was a sequence um for example by house was a graph and uh, which one is the root in the graph as well as the next one is a sequence and which one is a root oh actually by house is not a graph so by house is just a tuple so so it's just like by and house which is one predicate and one argument and for a uh, yeah. Here, uh, you're extracting event chain from this graph, right? Or where is the chain of events? Oh, this is, oh, sorry, I wasn't being clear. This is uh, like, this is a picture from the previous work. This is basically the previous work's model. So they like, they retrieve all this similar process with the same predicate argument, as you can see here, like by car or by apple. And they come to have this observe sub, sub event sequences the sub event sequence um like each of them like search car is originally a graph like a verb centric graph mm -hmm. but like they're different from the process and we linearize that yeah so the linearization part mm -hmm. is what I was looking for. so basically you take this or the previous work takes this graph and then convert them into sequences mm -hmm. okay yeah Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for the question. Yeah, so that's basically two of our vocabulary setting. And uh, as an illustration, like the original GPT-2 can like arbitrarily generate anything they want in their vocabulary. But for our case, like each of the steps is constrained to predict only within the vocabulary. Yeah. And here are some results and conclusions. So there are two things worth mentioning about the evaluation matrix. So the first one is like, how are we evaluating the uh, event process we are generating? The first one is basically string match. So each, each general word match exactly with the ground truth. And the other one is allowing hypername. So we are allowing, we are relaxing the um, evaluation and allowing the hypername to also be counted as true. And there are another, the evaluation matrix is called EROG 1 or 2. So it is inspired from ROG score. But in here, we treat one sequences as a word. So we have to predict like the entire like choose three correctly in order to account for one word. So basically how many like single um, event we're like predicting correctly and how many bigrams we are predicting correctly. Do you allow um, hypernym match there too? Yeah, so there are like basically four settings. So like string match, hypernym, um, and for each of them have Euroq1 and Euroq2. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, this is a greedy search method for um, the current word. So this is the advanced setting where we basically look at the entire subsequences, but not only looking at the verb. So the greedy setting is less optimal than the original work. As you can see, like the, um, the string match is kind of low in terms of like Euroq1 and Euroq2. The hypername is somewhat better, but it's still like not as good as hypername. Is this out of 100? Um, 
square root of one. Or I think else. no, it's not out of one because like it's out of a hundred. I think. Okay, so these are really really bad scores then, right? Um, but like the best work is only like around three, three or something. Or six, right? But but it's well it's well under those right now, right? Um, I have another. Okay, yeah, yeah, sorry. From this <laughs> from this table, we yeah. say, oh, it's much worse than it. Yeah, yeah. If you only use greedy, it's much worse. So what I mean by greedy word and greedy token is basically you greedily choose the token and you also greedily choose the word. And I also do another decoding which brings much better result is using greedy word by using Bing search to search the token. And in this case, for the hypername allowed case, it's showing better result, especially on the bigram setting. So like um, for the process each, where we have like different vocabulary for each system, we can also better uh, from the original uh, approach. So to know like, not even using the full constraint. So, uh, the immediate next step to do is to apply the full constraint where you can only choose like within what APSI can choose. And I believe that will achieve better result too. But like for even only constraining a vocabulary, this is also showing better result than the original work. But like for the string match setting, it is somewhat lacking. Um, there might be several reasons for this. So like if you allowed hypernaming in the um, that prediction space, it will bring a much larger vocabulary, like covering more cases. So for um, for instance, like for, for GPT-2, it could like infer not as well as the like string match, because like they have they have like different weighting scheme, but we basically treat each like token um, similarly. So that could be one reason why the string match is not that optimum. So hypernaming and string match are those are just ways of evaluating the same model, right? Like you're not treating yeah. differently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's I mean it's simply that you're saying like instead of your the the the, go, the reference was drive car and the, and what you put out was operate vehicle and like that should be a match, right? Yeah. And so it's kind of like a way to to get there with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I may have missed it. What's the difference between the word and token here? Oh, so the token is like the BPE token. So like, um, so to comprise over like, um, I don't know. So like, because hospital can be like tokenized into different group and we want to. So there's one way to do it. The simple way is to just add over into the vocabulary and have it like listed as one token. But we want to utilize the like pre-trained tokenizer. So we use like the, uh, token and to let it comprise for a word. So like, so basically the each token here is like being searched and we greedily take the search the word and continue from there. Okay, so because GPT-2 is based on BPE, mm -hmm. we have to beam search on BPE pieces. Yeah. But then greedy part of, I didn't get the greedy part. Um, the greedy word part? Yes. Okay, so like, the word has to be like within the vocabulary, right? So like uh, we have this vocabulary where we add all the relevant processes into our vocabulary. So the word has to be within them. So basically we have this score for all the possible word and we greedily choose the word and use the word and to predict from there. Okay, so yeah. then it, we have beam search for getting those tokens from the GPT-2 model, right? It's okay. Um, I can explain more if you want. Let me see how I do this. Because like, we also have, um, so like the word and the token will affect the model differently. So we have to make sure each word is within the vocabulary. So they have to be like fixed. So, but like the, um, for each token you are generating, you are basically eliminating the search space of possible word you can possibly generate it. Mm -hmm. And okay. after um, you like being searched the possible tokens, you we took the word that is most likely, and we generate the next word. So that's the greedy part of it. Got it. Yeah. So we did not like store the previous word and like continue generating the entire sequence. So that will be like bring search on the outside and inside too. Yeah. Not sure if I, yeah. 
Okay. Is that good? Yeah. Okay. Um, for the text generating part, it is still like training, but some initial results has like using the predictive sequence plus key is better than like key only using this one. But like it is, it has not yet converted, so I did not put the result here, but just some initial like positive finding that I can complete in the future. So yeah. So the immediate next step is basically bring more autoregressive models such as BART to see if it can also show a similar result or it can perform better. And we also need to put a full constraint on the model and like the same way as APSI does. And we also need the complete result for text generation. So the key plus the predicted sequences and the key plus the goal sequences versus the key only. So these are what we have to do. And for like future work, we can also expand on this. So the first thing is like, uh, we can pre-train the autoregressive model on more like this event processes. So uh, there are some data sets available on New York Times and basically using that, we can possibly get this model into this process language more. And there is, um, also, we have to finish the text generation experiment and possibly use some other control models to compare with our setting to see if it's actually leveraging the um, sequence information. So, yeah, that's basically my presentation. Yeah, um, so, what does it look like to have a, a rouge of six? Rouge one six. Like, what do these uh, sequences look like relative to the references? Is it like, do you is it complete garbage, or like, do you does it look like it's right, but we're not evaluating it correctly, or like too long, extra things added, critical things missing? I, I think one of the important thing here, especially in the greedy all the way setting, is that um, there are many in repeated steps. Mm -hmm. So, like. Um, especially after the second step, they start to repeat themselves. And, and there's like a possibility to like not allowing them to do that. Maybe it will bring in more diversity, but like, um, yeah, for the greedy setting, it's definitely a lot of repetition. Mm -hmm. And even for the beam search, it sometimes also fall into this pattern where they predict the same sequence over again for like three times. So that's one thing. And the other thing is that, um, so maybe we can evaluate um like if we provide more ground truths to guide it to see if we can produce better like subsequence in on later steps. Where would you get that ground truth in a real situation now? Oh, uh, yeah, that's true. We can probably run an uh, extraction model or something. <laughs> yeah, it, so it's it would be interesting to see if you can make a simple change like don't allow a sequence, a subsequence to be generated if you've ever generated it before. Uh -huh. Because I don't know if that ever exists in um, in uh, naturally occurring Wikidata, right? Like, do, 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 is you know, if a step is listed, is that step ever going to reoccur? Probably it's rare. No, yeah, yeah. it's very weird. Um, of course, having the repetition is usually a sign of undertraining somehow. So it's good motivation for, for, you know, it's a good sign for improvement. Saying okay, well, we need to train more. But but anyway, at least as a as a patch, I think, <laughs> I'd be I, I I wouldn't be surprised if you get like a huge gain, which would be like, well, our 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 way of doing better than APSI is just don't allow repetition. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, I do think like, because like the training size is kind of small for mm -hmm. GPT-2, it could definitely benefit if we have access to more um, training sequences to get it more into this like domain, I think. Uh, yeah, so the uh, wiki how is what you said was like 200,000, right? Or something like that? Yeah, it's really large. But APSI is only 13,000? Yeah, they filter it. Um, let me switch to the... Yeah, it has many articles, but I think APSI did some filtering to filter out cases such like for each step, they can only have one event. 
Mm -hmm. and, and after filtering, it does not like have much compared to its original, um, like, yeah. But if, uh, if part of what you need is just a training model, like, sorry, it's just train It's just a, uh, like unsupervised data to get, make a better language model. Mm -hmm. I need to worry as much about that. Right. Um, it, okay. But we still need to like do extraction upon that. Right. Well, like, so here you would have like, I guess, take shower, conserve water, mm -hmm. wait, wait for load, run, machine, turn off water, use it. Something like that, right? Which is like, there's all those, there's a bunch of problems in that sequence, right? Like there's the negative that's not, that's missing and all this stuff. But like, if the problem is, is fluency, of the model, then you can just pre-train on that kind of thing. You could just, right? Like, I mean, it's at least a, a step sequence. Oh, okay. Right, even though there's some problems with it, and if, if, if I mean, yeah. So. Yeah, I think that's one possible, one 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 good thing to try, mm -hmm. just to like have it have this like awareness of the order. Yeah, I mean, at least it's ordered, right? So, well, okay. So you have the the. Some problems here is, of course, like the before means that it's the, oh no, that's okay. Wait, wait for load and then run machine. That's good, right? Take, and take showers, conserve water. I mean, it's, it, so from a, from a discourse standpoint, it's more of an in order to rather than a, than a, a subsequent thing. So like, if you really wanted to make it fil highly filtered, you could run discourse classifiers and all this stuff. But if you just want to get verb noun, verb noun, and things that are roughly in order, it seems like you have a good source for that. Yeah, that's true. But this example will probably be filtered out by APSI because they can have multiples. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying is ignore that, right? Just take it direct from that. That way you get to increase your data set, mm -hmm. even though it's noisy. Okay. Uh, and it will be at the cost of reducing the length of the sequences, right? Right, reduce the length of the sequences? So if I understand correctly, you're saying just take quick showers to conserve water to help save rivers and then wait for a full load of clothes? Oh, no, no, sorry. I meant take all those three and chain them. I'm just saying, like, the fact that there's multiples in there, like, means it would get filtered out from APSI's perspective. But if all you really want to get is just, like, a sequence of, of steps uh, for the purposes of, of just pre-training your model, here you have six steps. Okay. Take shower, conserve water, wait, wait for load, run machine, turn off water, use it with bugs, right? So there's bugs in there, but it's still, you know, whatever. You got six steps and like, yeah, okay. So the turn off water and use it is not great, but whatever. So the e root metric, is that popular metric? Is it from proven to be good metric or? I don't think it's used very often. I think it's first mentioned APSI. Mm -hmm. um, I just like use them because it's their matrix of evaluating it. So um, I can definitely look at some other like matrix. Okay, so yeah. the rule you want to actually a metric defined in the APSI paper. It's called the event rule. So it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's not the other way. <laughs> okay, okay. So the, I'm trying to understand the difference between rouge and event rouge. So if is event rouge basically taking the whole event as one? Yeah. Unigram? Yeah. So rouge one is basically unigram recall, right? Yeah. And event rouge one, for example, what it is doing in the example you're showing, the WikiHow example, you had three events. Mm -hmm. And so, for example, the second event was so long. Um, can you go to the uh, example WikiHow slide, please? Yeah. Uh, Wait. So yeah, so the second uh, step in your event chain is wait for a full load of clothing before running a washing machine. So um, that has to match exactly with the generated event. Um, so this is the full tax. We have like extracted it, so it's not like this long. So I think the maximum length is actually at, at most five. So there are structure like SVO, SVSO, like that. Okay, so, so it has to match exactly to match with Rogue One. So that's why it's kind of slow. Okay. Would it make sense to try human evaluation later on? Because sometimes like a sequence could not match exactly, but still makes sense. Okay. I think we're kind of accounting for that using the hyper name. Right. Yeah. 
maybe some more simplification like remove the stop words take the stem of the word only match the stems don't worry about past tense present tense or continuous yeah yeah i think the original word has the evaluation on root i haven't like completed that but i think there will be a group matrix to just like show how how well you are grasping the most essential part of the events yeah Any more questions? Well, I think uh, if you are thinking about using more event sequences to train, well, I, I, I think we discussed about you can use um, you know, event chains, uh, CI extracted from New York Times. Mm -hmm. The other way around is I, I suspect that if you just extract more event chains from WikiHub, people are claiming, okay, you are just, because the data you are, you are providing at here is not a kind of distance supervision data. It's actually very relevant training data. So people mm -hmm. are claiming the improvement will just be led by you are using you know, direct, mm -hmm. Supervision signals in this task mm -hmm. more than APSI. But, but I think if you use the event chains from New York Times, that that's a distance supervision or indirect supervision. So that's probably a good way. Okay. Yeah. Can definitely try the using WikiHow first and see if there's like need for more. Yeah. No, I'm saying if you actually had more uh, more event processes than what. APS has used them from WikiHub. It's probably oh. not going to be a fair comparison. People argue this. Um, if we extract from WikiHub, we can just exclude those process key that are same in the training time, right? No, I I would have said that that becomes you 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 provided more training data to your model. And the training data oh. is directly relevant to your end task. Okay, okay. Okay, I see. Yeah. Good. So I think with that, we can applaud and thank Shanshi once more. And also thank you all for joining. See you next time.